Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk about a great new cure for relational data migration. We're going to try to uh, save you some brain cells. Uh, I know. Uh, how many of you are uh, systems administrators? OK, and how many are developers? OK, so both groups have this issue. So hopefully you'll uh, go away with uh, a feeling like you can save a lot of hours and save a lot of brain cells at the end of this. Whoops. Okay, so my name is David B. Love. I am the CEO of Prodly, and uh, I'm joined by my colleague, Daniel Rudman, who is the founder and CTO of Prodly. And uh, so he's going to come up in a few minutes to do a demo for us. Uh, so let's just review the agenda real quickly. Um, I'm going to show you some slides, talk about the relational data migration challenge, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the alternatives that you have. This isn't going to be new news for either the administrators or the developers, but we'll just go through it, make sure everybody's level set on what we're talking about. Then Dan will come up and he will do a pretty thorough demo for you. And then I'll come up again after he finishes his demo. We'll talk a little bit about the features that you saw. We'll, I'll tell you the Prodly backstory, which I think is kind of interesting. And then uh, because normally you have to sell this to your boss to get them to buy a cool tool like this, I think uh, we'll just give you some hints on how to cost justify something like this. And then we'll do a Q&A, and hopefully you will come up and give us some feedback on what you think about this tool. A lot of the features that you'll see in Dan's demo came from you. They, it came from people using it and making suggestions. OK, so before we proceed, let's okay. have a moment of silence to review the obligatory sure. forward-looking oh, statement slide. Is everybody finished? OK, perfect. Let's move forward. OK, so again, just to level set everybody, why would you migrate relational data? Well, um, there's basically two use cases for this. One is seeding a sandbox with your production data. So you may have lots of production data that you want to pull into a sandbox in order to cover all the use cases. And then the second would be going in the opposite direction. It would be your, you have a staging sandbox of some sort and you want to configure CPQ or some other complicated application and then move that master data into production. So production to sandbox, sandbox to production. Those are the two basic use cases. OK, so what exactly do we mean by relational data migration? Um, we're not just talking about moving the accounts over, the contacts over. We're talking about moving a set of data so that you can really do a thorough test. So you know, most Salesforce applications have a complex interrelated set of, of objects. And it, you can see here in this schema, this is just one part of the schema for CPQ. This is just the pricing part. And if you were to move this with a data loader, it would be very, very time consuming. You could do it, but it would take a long time. And notice all the interrelationships. So there's a lot of you know, circular relationships and master details. It's really complicated. OK, so what if you were to do this in some sort with a, a data loader? Um, basically, you're going to have to move the data one step at a time. And when you do that, you have to remap the, the IDs from the destination org to the child object parent IDs. And then you have to keep going back and forth. So you know, if you had 40 objects, you would have to go back and forth 40 times. I mean, there's, there's no really good way around it. 
So obviously, this takes hours, days, if you're talking about CPQ, and it burns a lot of brain cells. This is time better spent doing something else, doing coding. OK, so I, I think most of these options are well known to everybody, but let's just go through them real quickly. You could manually type your data in to your sandbox. Lots of people do that. But the problem with that is that you're not going to have very broad test coverage. It's not going to include all of the scenarios that you want to test. Um, you could use a full sandbox, but sandboxes are super expensive. Um, and you know we do have customers that had two, three, four full sandboxes. And you can imagine that having those four sandboxes would cost as much as your entire subscription to Salesforce.com. It could be hundreds of thousands of dollars a year if you want to give each developer a full sandbox. And you know the largest Fortune 50 companies do that, but it's a big waste of money. Um, you could use a partial sandbox. You could use the new the, uh, sandbox templates. But those templates are very limited in their capability to tune the data set. You could use a data loader, and we just went through how painful that is. You could use an ETL tool, but there'd be a lot of programming. It's complex. Uh, it's expensive. So it's probably not the best use of your time or the ETL tool. And then, of course, you could write your own scripts. Lots of people have to do that now if they don't have a tool like this. Or you could create your own tool. I had two or three people come up to me yesterday and say, oh, well, I tried to make my own tool. But that's time that is much better spent doing coding instead of building tools. And the other thing is, because all of you are contributing ideas to us, we're going to create a, a more robust solution faster than you can do by yourself. OK, so what's the answer? The answer is Prodly Mover, which is our 100% native relational data migration application for Salesforce developers and systems administrators. It's purpose-built just for this situation, for these two use cases. And uh, it's, it's something that um, everybody should be able to afford. Every developer and systems administrator should have access to a tool like this. Um, and by the way, if you're an end user and you're using consultants, systems integrators, they should have this tool because essentially they're charging you to do all of this data migration work. And it's a big waste of time and money in that case. OK, so um, I'm now going to ask Dan to come up. And he's going to say a few words about the next two slides. And then he's going to plug in his demo. So this is the demo scenario. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Hope you're having a great conference. All right. So during the demo, you know, we're going to go through a very simplified scenario, which you see up here. A pretty typical scenario, though, you know, basic CRM objects and bringing that over. As Dave mentioned, right, uh, the usual use case is more like the CPQ example, which you saw, which is far more complex. But this will give you a sense of how easy the tool is to use and what it's capable of. Um, and we're going to see that the tool does all of this in a single pass, right? So we'll go through all these relationships, bring everything over with basically just a few clicks. And the whole process just involves a few steps. So first, we're going to see how we create a target connection. So we connect to the sandbox where we want to bring over the data. Then we're going to create a reusable data set. So that's going to tell the tool which related objects you want to copy over. Uh, and that involves selecting the parent objects, parent relationships and fields, as well as the child relationship and fields. Then we're going to actually deploy. So that's going to start bringing the data over into the destination org. We're going to monitor that progress in real time as it is deploying. And finally, we're going to validate the results. So all right, let me get this up here. There we go. All 
All right. Here we go. So I have the mover tool open already. This is our production org. So this is where we're going to bring the data over from. So a typical scenario is you know, your manager says that a project has been approved, and we need to get a bunch of the CRM data over to a UAT sandbox and 10 other developer sandboxes, for example. And that needs to be done by the end of today. right? So doing it via data loader or manual process would make you probably cringe and try to hide, right? It would take you all night and all day. So we'll see with Mover how it takes literally just a few minutes. Um, so as I mentioned, the first step is just connecting to the sandbox. So you simply go to the Connections tab. Uh, you select whether you're connecting to production or sandbox. Uh, you give it a name. So we suggest coming up with some kind of standard for these names so you can track it. Uh, we're going to confirm that I want to open a new window. And here we're simply going to do an OAuth. So um, Mover uses just a regular OAuth mechanism, so industry standard, and that makes it very secure. Um, we, the tokens which are generated will be stored in your org. As you'll see here, we create a connection record. The Mover service is running on Heroku. So this is who you are authenticating to. So you just give it, you're giving it permission to access your data. Um, quick word on security here. So we don't store any data. We don't store any connection information. Everything is stored only in your orgs. So we simply pass the data through. So we have no disk storage or anything. You know, we did that on purpose because we obviously take security very seriously. We don't want to be responsible or store any of your data. So uh, here you see a connection record is created, and there's a bunch of information here which is useful for you. Uh, you'll notice the tokens again. These are stored in encrypted fields for additional security. And you can uh, activate and deactivate the data set as well. So that's it. Now we're connected. Uh, next, we're going to create the actual data set. So this is really the heart of the tool, right? This again tells Mover what is the related data that you want to move. You'll notice that we have a modern Lightning component-based editor. So this is using, utilizing all the latest um, components which are available from Salesforce. And you'll see that I'm, using, I'm in Lightning experience right now. You, if you're in Classic, the tool works the same way and just as well. So. Um, so we'll do just a few simple steps here. Uh, we'll give it a name, again, something which makes sense to you, and you can come up with a format. Um, you can give it an optional description. Then we're going to select the object that we start from. So you're always starting from some object in your schema, right? And in this case, we're starting from the account. And then we're going to build out from there. Uh, there's an upstart feature, which we'll come back to later in the demo, and that's a very powerful area of mover, which I'll go over. But for now, uh, let's just specify a simple filter. So this is basically a where clause in a SQL query. So all of the features which are available in your regular query are available here. And this is basically meant to restrict the amount of records which we brought over. So it gives you very powerful fine-grained control over what you want to bring over the sandbox, because obviously the memory is limited there, and you want to just bring over a subset. And you get a preview here. So that gives you an insight into how many records will be brought over. And you can make a decision, right, whether that's enough, you want more or less. On the right side here, you'll see a bunch of options. Uh, again, there's a lot of cool things here, which Mover does. Uh, for now, I'm just going to check the replicate owner option. That will ensure that each record retains their owner. So everything that's but over, you know, opportunities can, for example, retain their owner for sharing rules for territories, things like that. Uh, because by default, as you know, with a data loader, if a record is created, it uses the context user, which will be the admin who established the connection. All right, and you'll see some metadata options here as well. So we can bring over fields, things like that, which makes it very useful. Uh, next, we'll jump over into the field section. So here, you select which fields you want to bring over for any given object. By default, Mover selects the copy all fields option. So attempt to copy every field that's available. If a field doesn't exist in the other org, it'll skip it. Uh, and what's really cool about this option is that you know, we look at the schema at deployment time. So if you added fields, if you deleted fields, we'll automatically capture that and 
reflect that in the deployment. So you don't need to manage this page. Uh, if you do want to select fields individually, you can do that as well by just selecting a number of subset of fields. And also here we have a, a number of options, which I'll go over later, but you can configure field level options. Uh, next, let's look at the actual relationships, right? So this is where the value of mover really comes in, right? So we're going to leave the actual account object, and we're going to look at the related objects. So here we see the parent object. Uh, for the account, in this example, we don't want to select anything here, so I'll hop next to the child records. <laughs> so here we see all the related child objects of the account, right? So these are all the child relationships. And you'll see how easy it is to use Move, right? So in this case, we want to bring over our custom applicant object. So to do that, I just simply click this relationship. And I'll do the same for all the other CRM objects. So I'll bring over the contact uh, and the opportunity and the cases. Oh, sorry, and the contact. So when I'm doing this, Mover is creating another data set for that object and establishing a relationship. So just with a simple click, uh, you're establishing that connection. And then you can actually hop over into that object as well. So if I hop over into our custom applicant object, I now see the relationships for that object, right? So I, in this example, I want to connect it to the contact as well. So I can do that. I can hop over back to the account. Um, and I can do the same thing for the case, for example. So I want to connect the case to the account and the contact. And if I wanted to go deeper, I could do that as well. You know? So I can go one level deeper. I can go up. I can go sideways. I am basically building out a large graph. And Mover handles all these relationships. So you can go as many levels deep, as many levels high as you need, and select all the relationships which you want to bring over. And you can see really how easy it is, uh, how visual it is, and it's really just point and click. And that's about it. So in a few minutes, I've built out this data set, and now I'm ready to deploy. So to deploy, I just click the Deploy button. I see the connection here that I've created. All right, so I can select that one. I get the preview again, and you know, I can cancel out the last minute if I want to. Once I submit this job, the deployment actually begins. So I'm redirected to this uh, result page, which dynamically gets updated in real time as the deployment progresses. So our service is feeding results here for your analysis, right? Uh, you have an overall status, an overall result once it completes. And if there's any high level errors, you'll see that as well. And you will have a progress bar, which updates as it's deploying. Then you can actually dive in into the results and get a fine-grained look at them, right? And we break down the results by a few levels. So we break it down by the data set or object level. We also break it down by the individual record level. And what's really cool here is that for each individual record has uh, both a source and a destination ID and a link. So as we'll see, that makes it really easy to analyze and to check what has been transferred. Right. And if there are any errors, again, you know, you'll see it at the object, at the data set level, but also at the individual uh, record level as well. So that makes it really easy to analyze and pinpoint what went wrong if there are issues. Uh, so if I refresh this again, we should see more results. OK, yeah. So it's progressing through the various objects, and that's our algorithm traversing the graph in the appropriate way and, again, handling all these complications like Circular references, self-references. Clicking this link here, uh, I'm taken into the UAT sandbox. So now I can actually see this is the account which got created. Uh, it retained David as the owner because he was the owner of the account in production, although I was the one who established the connection and ran this thing. You'll also see all the child-related objects. So everything has been reconstructed exactly the same way and recreated exactly the same way. So we have the contact, opportunities, cases, which are associated both to the contact and the account, and as well as our custom applicant object, again, which is connected to the account and the contact. So you see that in a few minutes, you know, we've brought over this data. Uh, and you can imagine blowing this up to thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of records 
And a graph, which is maybe 10 times bigger, right, uh, it saves a lot of time versus doing it manually. So that's done. Uh, we think we can relax, right? But let's consider a scenario where now our manager comes to us and says, hey, we have this account and we've updated the website, right? So now actually we enrich the data and we now actually have the website information set here. And if we had this done for, again, thousands of accounts, maybe tens of different objects, you were basically have to repeat this whole process a day or two later, right? So again, you're spending a day, two, maybe a sleepless nights trying to get this data over. So let me show you quickly with Mover, right, how we handle this situation, again, in just a few minutes. So this is our data set, which we created before. Uh, and this is where the upstart function comes in. And this really becomes ind indispensable. So you see here that we have several upstart options, right? We have the standard Salesforce upstart. That's a classic. Uh, data loader upstart where you have a formal external ID. And you're welcome to use that. We also have a custom upstart function. So there's a few things which Mover adds to that experience. Uh, number one, you can select any field to be your external ID. right? So here, I can go and I can select my account name to be my external ID, although formally that cannot be an external ID in Salesforce. And I can also do composites. So I can select my type to be an external ID as well. So now Mover will look for a record where both of those fields matches. And you can also actually select parent as well to be an external ID. And that's useful for records which don't have any unique identifier across the entire org. And also, as you saw here, if there's more than one match, we'll just match the first one found, unlike like classic upsert, which errors out. And that's kind of annoying, especially in Sandbox, when the data is not always super clean. So that's the upstart option. Uh, also, let's say you know, we've been told that we want to obfuscate the contact emails, because that's personal information, and we don't want to accidentally send emails to our customers. So again, I'll hop over into the contact data set. I'll find the email field. And this is where these options, which I mentioned earlier, come in. right? So there's a bunch of options that you can do for any given field. And one of them is to scramble. So I'll select that. And again, let me deploy. So I have my uh, connection selected here. So I'll click Deploy again. And now it's going to basically match up that existing account that we found. And it's going to just update the website. right? So if I click this link again, we have this global media account. And now we see that we've updated the website. And this is the same uh, account which we created earlier. Right? So it's matched that up. And once the contacts come in, we'll see that the email is getting obfuscated. So, th and that's it. And again, you know, taking this to the next level for CPQ or something like that, you can see how quick and easy it is to really build it out. And then all these data sets can be reused uh, as is, right? So once you spend some effort to build it out, you're then rerunning it. And it's basically set it and forget it type of setup. And you can push the same data set across many connections. Uh, you can automate these things so they have a continuous integration environment. And that's it. Thanks so much, Max. Uh, Max, Dan. Dan, why don't you stay so that you can uh, answer questions? Dan. I think we also wanted to mention we had the booth over here, so if you're welcome to come up if you have any other questions later. Okay, so we're. Got that in. No. Got that. Which one do I need? Hmm. Go ahead. This app? Uh, so the question was, is this app available? And the answer, <clears throat> the answer is, yes, it is available. It's been available for the last two years. 
and it's uh, on the App Exchange. <clears throat> okay, so um, we only have a few minutes left, so I'm just going to go through the slides kind of quickly. But the point I wanted to make with these feature slides is that the product is purpose built for relational data migration. And so the features that Dan showed you are very hard to duplicate if you're doing scripts in Sokol or something like that. Um, and I w also want to point out that it's a declarative lightning based user interface. So you can, if you're a developer, you can ask your systems administrator to put something together for you real quickly, get some data, put it into a sandbox. So either you can use it or you can have an admin use it. And it has all these great features like field setting options and uh, creating missing, recreating missing fields in the destination org. Um, that we taught, Dan showed you the drill down options. And because it's native, it means that everything is running on the Salesforce platform. So it's going to be more secure, more reliable, more scalable. It's just a big advantage compared to using some other uh, environment. OK, so I wanted to just share with you the Prodly backstory. Basically, the product came about because Dan is a developer. And so he's a consultant. He, has, he had a number of clients. And he was running into this problem on a regular basis. So he started writing the Mover app. And then because his brother, Max, is the founder of Steelbrick, when they were talking uh, you know, on the weekends, Max said, well, you know, going from production to sandbox is, is one thing, but going from sandbox to production for doing CPQ data is basically the same problem. So he fixed Dan up with Gio Mize, who was the VP of professional services at Steelbrick, and Gilles helped to flesh out all the features that are needed for doing migration from um, a sandbox into production and um, help to prepare a template. So there's a CPQ template that you, that you can use that really speeds things up. And then, of course, because uh, Steelbrick customers have been using this for a long time, um, they're, they've really wrung out all of the, the bugs, and they've helped us to add a lot of really great features over the last two years. And now um, that we're taking this to the market in a serious way, we have a very ambitious roadmap, and we'd love to uh, share that roadmap with you. Um, so as promised, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to justify it. And because we're running late, let me just say that it will save time. It will accelerate your development cycles. It'll help you to uncover more defects. If, you're, if you've got a bigger data set, you're going to catch things quicker which also helps to reduce your development cycle. And of course, if you're an SI, it reduces your costs and allows you to um, be more competitive when you're writing your SOWs. Um, so I just want to give you a, a quick idea of how you would justify this. So let's say that you bought the mover edition on the, um, on the left-hand side, the starter edition, for $5,000. And you got 240 deployments for the year. That's how we charge by the number of deployments. That would mean that you'd save, let's say you were sa it saved two hours per deployment. That would be $300 at $150 an hour times 240 equals $72,000. Minus the $5,000 means that you're ahead by $67,000. So the payback is in less than a month. Um, there are a lot of great customers. Many of them are, are Salesforce CPQ customers like Nutanix, for example. But there are people, there are companies like Clear Channel, which have essentially created their own CPQ, and they're taking data from production in very massive data sets from production into a sandbox to do coding. I want to point out that there's a free trial. Go to the App Exchange, download it, have fun. And now we're ready to do some q and I'm going to repeat the question, so. Is it appropriate for org-to-org merges? Um, you can 
you could do that, but it's, so sorry, I said I was gonna do that. <laughs> so the question was, is Mover a good tool to do migration from org to org? Let's say that you've set up a new org. So it's probably not the best tool for that. You could do it, but um, there are other whole org migration tools that I would recommend using for that. Question? Okay, so the question is um, the opposite of adding fields, can you subtract fields? And so I'll, I'll let Dan yeah. handle that. So it will handle that as far as it'll skip those fields uh, because they, yeah, they don't exist, so it's not going to try to bring them over. Right now, it doesn't delete fields, it only adds fields. But if that's something that community is interested in, you know. We're very aggressive in our roadmap, as Dave said. So and I'll also say that uh, you can delete data. There is a delete yeah. data function, but not the delete metadata. Okay. Yes. Other questions? <laughs> True. OK. So the question is, um, how do you handle the fact that um, a developer might not have admin rights in the production org. Sure. So the, first of all, there's a difference between who created the connection and who kicks it off. And those can be two different people. Uh, so I, I, I was the same person. It could be two different people. There are some levels of permission required, right? So whether a company sets up an integration, a, a user, you know, a generic one, which has the appropriate permissions without the logins, uh, but at ultimately, at the end of the day, whoever is the context user needs to be able to see the data. So that should be a policy that's put in place. Somehow. Which is why I think it makes sense to involve your systems administrators in this process and why you're going to essentially create this more sophisticated software development lifecycle process that um, today probably doesn't exist because you really can't do this. You're, everybody's in an enterprise. Yes, right now, yes. Well, that's the source org, so whichever org you're copying from. And very soon, we're going to have a control org, a distributed environment. So you can have central org where everything else is controlled, and that's where you sit. And for vendors, for example, or consultants developed, that would be another option. So I think we're going to get um, okay. kicked off the stage. If you have more questions, we're going to walk right over to the kiosk, the probably kiosk. Come on over, and we'll, we'll finish up. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.